1948, uh, when of course it all started, uh, the University of Ghana set out to be a world-class research driven university. Uh, the community is marking its 75th anniversary and I caught up with the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Ava Amfo, uh, who spoke to us about a wide range of uh, issues starting off with the 75th anniversary of the university. Professor Nana Abba Apianfo, thank you for talking to Joy News. Uh, it's been 75 years and of course uh, my congratulations are in order to say that uh, the university community continues to grow. Uh, and what's striking is that as you celebrate your 75th uh, anniversary, you're also reflecting on nurturing resilience, adopting technology and embracing humanism. Many are asking why that, by the way. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, uh, Blessed. Yes, the university is 75 years old and we are really excited about that and all the achievements of the university within these past 75 years. Yes, we chose the theme carefully, nurturing resilience, adopting technology, yeah. embracing humanism. For the past 75 years, it hasn't always been rosy for the University of Ghana. We've had our challenges, but what I love about this institution is that it's always able to regenerate itself, to bounce back, because through challenges we, re we reflect and then, you know, try to right the things which went wrong. And so the university has always been resilient. And as we look forward to the next 75 years, uh, that is something that we need to always bear in mind. Interestingly, when you look at the emblem of the University of Ghana, the Aya symbol is a symbol of uh, resilience. And so it's no wonder that yeah. over the years, the university has exhibited this attribute. Uh, indeed, and many well, would say that the resilience is paying off, isn't it? Oh, uh, absolutely. When you take a look at the um, university, the latest world ranking of universities, yeah. you, you seem to be topping nationally. Yeah. Uh, and I understand in the West Africa sub-region, the yes. University of Ghana comes second. Yeah. But also if you look at the vision of the school, you're aiming to be a world-class research-driven organization. So you're looking forward to more, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there the, the are a number of uh, different university rankings, the Shanghai, uh, what is known popularly as a, a Shanghai rankings, also the CWR rankings. Yes, has rated the University of Ghana, no doubt, uh, number one in the nation and second in uh, West Africa. Uh, of course, we are glad for these, uh, but de definitely the University of Ghana has the potential to do even more to have a greater impact in the society that we live in and uh, beyond and for me that would be the most satisfying uh, uh, factor yes it's, 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 it's great to have all of those uh, right. uh, rankings but it's important for the community in which we operate in to feel the presence of the university the, the university is having an impact within the lives of the the people who live in these uh, communities. So you said much more about the ranking too. Well, the rankings, are, <laughs> the rankings are great. I mean, yeah. you know, rankings in themselves they are controversial. I mean, uh, what what are the measures? One rankings differ from the yeah. other, and so on. So these are great, uh, but beyond that, what is it? So you are number one, yeah. and so what? <laughs> you know, bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Person. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's absolutely. I mean, uh, mm. uh, great, mm. but really, as as I'm saying. Those are great. But we need to go beyond uh, that and have an impact. Let let our research be impactful. Let our teaching and our learning change the lives of people. And let our community engagement be 
much more uh, impactful. Yeah, I see. So it's much more about impact for you. And, and uh, we're all excited that you're still within the university community witnessing this milestone. Um, I recall that as part of some of the activities heralding the, the, the main events, you, you've been engaging those who've gone be before you, uh, your predecessors, if, if we may call them as such. You're walking in the shoes of the uh, Ivana Diamonds as the, uh, um, and, and the others. Um, looking at where all of these people, uh, the Kwapons, have taken the <laughs> University of Ghana from to where we are today, where do you see the university as of now and where do you feel that, that, that as part of your aim and your personal goal you want to take the University of Ghana to in the coming years? Thank you very much. The, the university is primarily set up as a place of knowledge uh, production. So the university engages in research, the university does teaching and learning, and the university also engages in the community. So extension services, community services, and, and so on. And I must say that uh, irrespective of who has been in office over the years. The university has tried uh, to maintain its role, its expected role within the society and so we are at a point where my responsibility is to continue to lead the university in this regard, uh, to have uh, more impactful research, uh, to have technology driven processes. We are in the 21st yes. century. I mean there's there's absolutely nothing that you can do now that you will be efficient and effective if you don't use technology to enhance all of your uh, processes, right? I mean, there is the, the need for, for us. The university has built a vibrant community over the years. It's alumni, it's students, it's staff, a faculty. And when you are talking about the University of Ghana, Everybody is interested in the University of Ghana, whether they've been here, you know, whether their children are here, whether their siblings are here. And I say that practical, practically means everybody in, in, in the country. So it is my, and, and the University of Ghana has amazing talents from our students through to our faculty and staff, right? So my responsibility is to create an environment which allows these talents talents to flourish. We are a complex community, almost 75,000 students, uh, about 6,500 uh, staff and, and faculty. As one person, you simply cannot do everything. So what you do is to create the environment for all of these amazing talents to flourish. Mm. Uh, and you're adding flavor to the story because you have a unique one as well. Uh, you, you're the first female vice chancellor That's of correct. the University of Ghana and I'm so happy to be talking to you at a time when you've done that not just for a year but you're going into the second year of yeah. that journey. How has it been for you? Um, and <laughs> forgive me if I'm stereotyping here mm -hmm. but of course you're a woman so it yeah. presents you with a unique opportunity and also uh, a challenge as well. Uh, the opportunity being the fact that you're uh, shattering the ceilings and opening the door for many more young women and girls to aspire to greater heights, but also the challenges because of the system, high levels of patriarchy that, that of course many of you in leadership will complain about. So let's weigh the two. Let's start off with the opportunities. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you're you right. right. This, this, I'm just ending the second year mm -hmm. of my tenure as a vice chancellor. It's been an interesting journey. Uh, never a dull moment when you are dealing right. with the University of Ghana. And you know, I came into office at a very interesting time when we had had the first female chancellor, the first female chair of council, and so and then we got the first female vice chancellor. And so three principal officers, these right. are what we, who we call the principal officers of the university, right. all three of them women with a female registrar as 
well and a number of other uh, female uh, directors and uh, deans and, and so on so well it was a good time generally uh, this was embraced by the whole nation I might say and even uh, internationally it wasn't easy at all getting there and of course being there as you rightly said this is a position that people are used to seeing a man in there and it's easier for uh, people to accept leadership uh, from from men you know when you are a woman you know uh, when when you stamp your authority oh that's you know she's, she's she's too hard she's this and that you know but what I did was just to take the authority of the office and operate in that. It wasn't easy in the beginning, but I think that gradually people came to accept the fact that this is what it is. This is the person that we have as our vice chancellor at this moment, and we all need to work together. We need to rally behind her. And it's also important, you know, to, to share your, 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 your vision. I mean, one of the first things I did was to have town hall engagements with different sectors of the university community where I shared my visions, my six, what I call my six key strategic objectives, engaged uh, them, asked them for inputs. And so when, when people realize that you value them, you understand that they have something to offer, yeah, they very happily uh, work, work with you and you just to operate with, within the authority of the office. And I must say that it's also um, sent a very good signal for many young women out there, right? It's, it's, there were so many people who would uh, walk up to me I was just saying, about asking you that Yes. Question. <laughs> the university community. Yes, I'm sure some absolutely. young girls will walk up to you and say, yes. I want to take over when you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, not exactly, yeah. but at least they, they, they see yeah. you there, and so they realize that it is uh, possible. What I have realized is that there are more girls and women within the university community who are availing themselves up for various positions, elective positions, appointed for positions. And very often when they step up this way, they do very well. You, you've been very centered on, you know, technological transformation uh, and it's also even reflecting in the theme that you've selected yeah. for uh, the 75th anniversary why technology and why is that instrumental to the change the kind of change that you want to bring into the university community yes thank you and so the when I articulated uh, my, my vision right uh, two things which underline my vision is really technology and humanism yeah technology because I do certainly believe that there's absolutely nothing that you can do and succeed in in today's world without using technology to enhance it and so I look at as training students who are technologically adept and it doesn't matter what discipline you are studying, whether it is uh, history, whether it is material engineering and uh, sciences, uh, whether you know it's political science or economics, you need to know your way around technology and how you can use technology to enhance whatever you are doing, whatever you are studying now and what you can do afterwards. Whether you are looking out for someone to employ you in the public private sector or you're looking to starting your own uh, business technology is absolutely uh, uh, critical and I mean even when you look at the university the university keeps growing in numbers we cannot continue to constantly thinking about managing these numbers using a brick-and-mortar solution we would have to resort to technology <laughs> and so technology really is uh, pervasive and as a university a university is established first and foremost for the public good and so in whatever we are doing even 
even as we are advancing technology, we should remember always to keep the human being at the center. We should remember that whatever we are doing, you know, it's about the human being. It is for the human being to have an uh, improved situation in life. And so that's why I'm really concerned about technology on the one hand and, and also humanism say, on the well, other hand. We've not seen that in the history of the school before. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to talk about your policy about the one student, one, student, one laptop, one laptop <laughs> initiative. When you said that and when you announced it, many were out there on social media, <laughs> tweeting about it, talking about it and yeah. asking, okay, will this ever happen? Yeah. When is it happening? Well, it is <laughs> happening. Actually, the one student, one laptop is just one aspect of a three-pronged program which we dubbed the vice chancellor's uh, program to enhance the UG, the vice chancellor's digitalization right. program to enhance the UG student experience. And so the first one is the classroom modernization, which involves modernizing our classrooms, renovating our classrooms, putting in ICT equipment, you know, that makes teaching and learning more exciting, that allows even students and uh, faculty to participate being from outside those uh, four walls of, 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 of the classrooms and the so that's the first component the second component is the one student one laptop uh, where we're using innovative means to make laptops or handheld devices accessible for students uh, remember what I said about training our students to be technologically adept well, if these students don't have their own devices, there's a limitation to which they can learn and explore, right? And the One Student Laptop itself has three components. Um, the first one is about giving our needy students free laptops. The second one is uh, getting uh, vendors to supply our students who can afford laptops at reasonable rates and all also through high purchase agreements and we are actually looking to assembling laptops on right campus here. right here on campus so we've gone through the process uh, to select the companies you know signed the agreements and uh, so very soon we should break the ground uh, for the assembly the the, the assembly so what plans. Would, you, would you be using um, hinging it more on doing it within the uh, campus community or getting someone from from outside to provide these laptops which so, of them, so, which so of the modules are you so right on? Mm. right at the beginning you know we are getting people to supply we've signed the agreements mm. you know getting the assembling plant and all will take a bit of time but at the same time we've also signed the agreement to start that and so I believe that within a year you know we will will then move over to getting the laptops assembled here. And that's our priority. That's that's where we want to get to. Because you know there are a number of advantages to that yeah. as well. I mean it provides our students with internship opportunities, with job opportunities and so on and so forth. So that's the ultimate and we we really working towards as as I said, I'm sure that uh, before the end of the year, you know you would you would get an invitation to come and cover us as we, as, as, well. <laughs> as we break ground yeah. for that how many students um, are you targeting for now um, in the short term and looking you know at the timelines how do you um, plan to roll out you know the various phases first of all supplying the laptops and then eventually getting to that point where of course you'd have to do that within yeah so like we do at the university I set up an implementation committee uh, to do that and that committee was chaired by Professor Peter Corte, director of ESE. They've done an amazing job. First of all, they had to work on the draft policy, which was accepted with council. And all together, they were working with about 40,000 students in mind. 
for, 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 for starters. So that's the number that the, uh, we've been working with, uh, both with the supply, the immediate vendoring, the supply, and then the uh, manufacturing. But you know there's potential for so much more because as I mentioned, we're almost now uh, 75,000 students all together. And uh, I believe that once that uh, starts and it's uh, rolling, other institutions would also uh, buy into it. Uh, the 75th anniversary is also providing you with an opportunity to um, reflect on some aspects of um, the school's history, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, which is in the last few days has been subject to uh, nationwide debate and conversation. Uh, the President of the Republic was here within the university community and also joining that uh, conversation as well. Then he puts up the argument that the university the university's history ought to be, you know, either retold or reframed properly so that we acknowledge those who contributed to the school, which, which is not out of place uh, to, to start off with. But then it's been stoking a lot of debate uh, as to what kind of contribution the likes of uh, Dr. J.B. Dankwa have contributed to the school and the others. Are you considering, as a management of the university, to probably perhaps commission a committee that will revise the history of the school knowing that you are 75 years you might have lost track of one or two you know milestones within the school's history what's your take on that pleasant have you been talking to my people <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean you 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 may or may not mm -hmm. know that yes. when the university was 50 years there was a history book you know that was uh, outdoor oh, really? I'm, I'm not yes yes, yes, should, yes. You, should, you should find yeah. it and 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 read that and so the history of the university has been properly documented but well that was for for 50 50 years, years. Yeah. and actually we are in the process of, of, of commissioning you know a team to update that mm -hmm. and uh, when we when we have our, our, our final program for the year which is a banquet on the 22nd of, of December you know we're going to talk more of that so there's a team on the ground already working already working, already working okay. but we haven't uh, properly outdoored this uh, team we will do that before the end of the what year and um, to do? Um, if once commission what, what would you expect them to do you would you would have to you would have to wait for the commissioning to see <laughs> the full to, 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 to see the yeah. full scope mm -hmm. right. of uh, their, their their duties mm -hmm. but essentially they would be reviewing and updating the history that has been uh, documented up to when we were 50 years old. So that's that's what they would do. For the details of it, I would say that you have to wait for when we properly out of them on 22nd of December. That's not too You've far You've been around now. for a long time. Well. <laughs> Personally, do you feel that there's a portion of the history of the school that's not been well documented uh, and and this is not just centered on perhaps what the president has said but you know there, there are unsung heroes people who have dedicated them, themselves uh, selflessly to the growth of the university do you feel that there's just a portion of that history that that has been sublimed in one way or the other due to you know maybe a lot of activities that have been going on well i mean definitely we haven't uh uh, we haven't done uh, had a conscious effort, especially since the initial documentation up to the 50 years. We haven't. There, there were attempts in, in in the past. I remember that uh, one of the former uh, vice chancellor, Professor IT, set up a team, but really uh, the ideas then didn't materialize. So at 75 years, it's opportune time for us to revisit that matter and properly you know document all the uh, major and even behind the scene you know my activities and, and also acknowledge the people who have played significant roles in the development and the history of the university uh, what, what made the university to lose that opportunity because many say this is the premium this is the University of Ghana 
this should be, shouldn't be happening to the university? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that we have lost it. Mm -hmm. We have it in bits and pieces okay. here and there, you know, even in some of the biographies and autobiographies of uh, key officers and so on and so forth. But as an institution, well, I, I mean, I, I keep telling you this is a, a complex university. There are so many things that go on. And sometimes some of these things uh, slip through the cracks. But thank God, 75 years, we sat up and we, we realized the need for us to properly document our history up onto this time. So it's not too late. We are catching up and uh, very soon you will see that project materialize. Light aside, will Dr. J.B. Danko have you included this time around? Well, everybody who has, but you haven't even read, <laughs> you haven't read, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the initial book right. by uh, uh, Budeka. So have you, you have cannot, you, have you read you, you can you, 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 you cannot even assume JV no I don't think so right. I think that all those who played significant roles to the establishment of the university has properly been acknowledged right including Dr. what JV what Dango. what what the the president was yes, advocating yes. for was for a renaming of the oh, university yes. after him but that's something which is really I mean subject to a huge debate there are various ways in which you acknowledge people who have contributed to the establishment of the university and we have a whole avenue okay. named after JB Dangwa that, that's the major avenue in this university uh, we've seen CK Tedham, we've seen it with other public mm -hmm. institutions mm -hmm. and the University of Ghana some say does not represent an icon that will inspire you know the, the university, university community. of Ghana How about naming it after represents Dr. the <laughs> nation <laughs> It represents the nation and this is a brand which is well known all over the world all of these years. It's representative of the nation and that is it. Okay, uh, we'll come back to the conversation later on when you commission uh, this very uh, committee to do some more work on it. But uh, it's also been a uh, very uh, tough time for you dealing with the vandals mm -hmm. uh, because the Commonwealth Hall historically has been uh, male dominated it's, it's been male uh, looking at the history of the school and the uh, latest riots that we've seen on campus as part of the solution you and management feel that uh, some of these halls that hold these um, you know uh, ideas so dear to them that their halls cannot be mixed uh, this is the time to break that and to open up the community um, for 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 uh, these halls to change but the old Vandas Association, they are out issuing statements and indicating that this would not help in terms of preserving the history of the school. I'm sure that you've been weighing all the arguments. How does that come to you? And as management of the university, have you reversed or perhaps have you considered reversing the decision to make the Commonwealth Hall a mixed hall? <laughs> Okay, so, well, I, I, I need to correct right. some uh, incorrect impressions which are out there, but I also have to be careful when I talk about this because you may know that the Old Vandals Association and some uh, students, former students, have taken us to court. So this is a matter which is in court, so I need to be careful what I say about it. But. You know, that's why it is important for us to appraise ourselves of the history of our university. Uh, because whoever said that Commonwealth Hall has, you know, forever uh, been, been, been single, single sex, you know. It started out, you know, with, with, with some females in there. My own uh, former lecturer and uh, the, the, the first female pro vice chancellor of this university, Professor Dolphine was at some point in time in Commonwealth really? Hall. So, so that's yes. a living experience. So, so yes, yeah. so, so that's to start with. Right. And let me also correct the impression yes. that that was out there that this management led by my good self uh, has turned the hall into a mixed hall or had the intention okay. to turn the hall into the mixed hall. Nothing like that 
has ever come up in all the discussions, in all the committee discussions and the eventual council decision. What the, 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 the policy that we put out there, which we are implementing, is for us to reserve the traditional halls for our first year students. And that's that happens right here in this country and in other institutions. You go to KNUSD, you go to UCC. That's exactly what happens. We are rather late coming to this late in the day. And that's what happens all over the world. You give priority to your most vulnerable students. And your most vulnerable students are those who are coming into the institution for the very first time. With regard to Commonwealth Hall and uh, parts of Main Sasaba Hall, uh, we implement implemented uh, the for the other holes it's a gradual implementation but for these uh, two holes we implemented the policy fully immediately also because of the disturbances that were going on at the time between the students of these two halls so I needed to uh, yeah, yes. yes I needed to clear the air on that yeah. uh, so you still go ahead Oh, the policy is, is, is being implemented, yeah. Uh, which means, technically? Oh, which means that um, these halls and all of the traditional yes. halls are reserved for our first year students and graduate students. So you come into the hall, uh, first year level 100. After level 100, uh, you would have to leave the hall and make room for the new set of uh, fresh students who are coming in. So you leave the hall and find accommodation in the other uh, halls and hostels on campus the UGL halls and other private uh, hostels on and around campus. What do you feel this sense of entitlement, if we may have to describe it that way, is coming from or stemming from? Is it um, a matter of 